Welcome back to Romania. We are wrapping up our two week road trip around Transylvania and we are at our second to last stop in the beautiful old town of Sighishora. Sighishora actually dates back to Roman times, but it's most known for being settled by the German Saxons in the 12th century. Basically, the king at the time sent out a bunch of guilds of merchants and craftspeople to settle the town and have it be a military stronghold at the edge of the territory. And those guilds built 14 defensive towers, nine of which still remain today and you can go see and visit. The most famous or the most known is definitely Council Tower, AKA the Clock Tower, and that's where we're heading to first. Close on Monday, so we're not going to be able to climb up the main clock tower here, which is unfortunate because this thing is beautiful. I was really looking forward to the views from atop. We're staying right around the corner from it, so we look at it all day, every day, and this was the perfect weather day for showing you guys around. And we walked up and we're like, Where, Where's the entrance? I thought the entrance was right here, and I'm like, I thought to myself, it's Monday, it's closed on Monday, it's closed on Monday, I know it is. And I looked it up and sure enough, but in lieu of going inside right this minute, maybe we'll try in the morning. Yeah. But I have fun facts for you. It was built in the late 14th century. And in, the six, in 1676, there was a fire actually that started when the Taylor's Tower exploded because all the towers were used for storing different things. That tower stored gunpowder and the gunpowder exploded and caused a big fire. So it burned and they rebuilt it. The guilds rebuilt it in the Baroque style that it is in now. And then in the 1800s, the beautiful colorful tiles were added. Those are my favorite. Yeah, Those and that beautiful. really gives it its kind of shine, its yeah. kind of uniqueness as well. And you'll see there's all kinds of beautiful details on it. There's a set of little figurines at the top, and both of us mm. were wondering, like, does it do anything? Because we've walked by on the hour and didn't see any action. Yeah. But at 6 and 6, 6 a.m. and 6 p.m., the little angels switch out for the day to basically represent the working hours and nighttime hours. So we're going to try and come by at 6 p.m. and Hopefully see we if catch that. we can see it moving. It also has details like, you know, all the gods representing the days of the week on the clock face, things like that. And I read the four little corners turrets represented the judicial independence of Sigishora and of the council itself because that is the council tower and town halls right around the corner and apparently they had so much independence they could carry out all kinds of judicial punishments all the way up to the death penalty so Sigishora was a big, big <laughs> so, place <laughs> how do you know all of this stuff you're like encyclopedia over here <laughs> I know I pulled a Jordan Jordan loves a tourism board website and so that's true I was tasked with the fun facts for today and so I went to their website and I <laughs> memorized as much as I could for you let's keep going trying to show you something exciting and cool right off the bat and while we have beautiful b-roll of the tower it's not as good as going up but the thing I've been looking forward to this morning is my coffee I haven't had any yet and there is an excellent coffee shop called Atelier right here in the old town highly recommend and they have one of my favorite drinks a dirty chai so please oh look at it look at it look at it look at it there's cats everywhere too and they're very very cute anyway let's go get coffee come on
this place, y'all. The coffee here is so good. I get the cortados every time. They're some of the best cortados I've ever had. Like, being dead serious about that. Also, this place like is popular for people to get photos because there's a bunch of colorful umbrellas on the street over one of the restaurants here. And as you can see, people are walking through. All the crowds are starting to come in, y'all. But y'all, this morning, I went out for one of my B-roll expeditions with my zoom lens and the drone. I woke up at sunrise, which was like 5.40 this morning, and this town was so peaceful and quiet. I got so many fun shots, and honestly, it was so fun just to explore by myself with nobody else awake throughout the whole old town. It was like just this moment that I had. I was here before the coffee shop opened. They're sweeping out front, and then they turn on the lights, they open up, and it was peaceful. It was just so still and quiet. I enjoyed a cortado. And it was just like a memorable moment for me, which is vastly different than now. There's like sirens going off, there's crowds coming in, there's kids playing stuff. Like, so a little tip for you, if you really want to enjoy the old town and the coffee and everything, get out early, early in the morning, because around 11 a.m. it's hopping. chai is quite nice. The hot tip I will add to that is it's very similar to when we were in Rotenburg in Germany, another very, very popular town as far as day trips and things like that. Just stay a night because once you stay a night, you can get out in the evening. It is so quiet and peaceful. Every night we open the windows to our hotel, which looks out onto the square, and it's so calm and you can just kind of watch the few people who are here kind of milling about. It's lovely because I will tell you what, Sigi Shore is incredibly popular for tourism with Romanians. It's full every day. It's full all the time. It's it's actually a very like active and noisy place. Just in general, the clock tower is going off where there's drummers or there's like people and trains and cars and it's a, a very lively place. So if you want to take it in without all that, stay a night. We've stayed three nights. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wait, come play. Too slow. Boop. Too slow. <laughs> Too slow. <laughs> Homie, I can't let you actually catch me because you have claws. Boop, boop, boop. Boop. Beep, beep. Wee. Touched its toes. I touched its toes. They're very chill kitty cats everywhere. I love it. Oh, we could sit there and play with the kitty cats all day long. We got to keep exploring the old down here. And one of my favorite things is just to get lost in all the little alleyways all throughout the old town. You come across just beautiful scenes of the buildings and flowers and cats and people strolling by. So let's continue on exploring old town and see what we find. hot tip for the best photo spot in town right next to the uh, citadella hotel is a road with a beautiful view of the clock tower and there's even folks getting photos of it right now so bring your tripod do whatever and do that nice forced perspective thing where you back up a bit and then zoom in and it brings your background a lot closer Ooh, and it'll look so juicy and so pretty it's a great spot for a photo let's keep walking I think my favorite aspect of these like medieval towns that we're getting to visit is the way in which you can really feel history around you. Like these buildings haven't changed much at all and I think I read that most of the buildings here are at least 300 years old and you really just get that vibe which then kind of gives you that fairy tale feeling because it almost feels unreal that all these buildings could be here just as they are in such beautiful condition and they have this waviness to them. The roofs have a wave to them, the buildings have a wave because they've settled into the earth. Just 
changed so much <laughs> literally over centuries. Is that your wave impression? Yeah, that's my wave for you. And it's so much character, so much charm, and they're all colorful and beautiful. Mm. It's just, it's lovely on a sunny day to just stroll the streets. This old town here reminds me of a lot of other places that we've been to in Europe. The arch behind me in this street kind of gives me um, memories of Tallinn, Estonia, because there's like so many arches in the little alleyways. And then the clock tower actually reminds me of Prague a little bit. The way the color is on the tower roof, and it doesn't have an astronomical clock, but it has the other clock. And I will say the old town here definitely rivals some of the prettiest old towns you've ever seen in Europe. Not all the towers here have something going on. You can't climb to the top of everyone and you can't go inside everyone. We're at one though that you can go inside. It actually has a museum. It is the Furrier's Tower. And fun fact, a furrier is somebody who deals in pelts and fur. And all the towers here are named similarly. They're all named after a trade or a guild, which were one of the original guilds from, I believe the Saxons who were sent here by the King of Hungary to settle this area and protect the Transylvania region from anybody who opposed the Hungarian kingdom. Just outside the Furrier Museum, we have a pillory, which I didn't even know that these things had an official word for them. I, that word sounded familiar, but anyway, this is an example of a pillory. Obviously, they would have been set in like the town square or in front of the church as punishment for crossing the law or whoever for public humiliation. You can't touch this one, but you know, it's the classic little stalks. Is that what we call them usually? Just, you know, for punishment. It's interesting though. So Ashley was admiring the beautiful flowers here in this quiet, charming alleyway. And this lady came out who runs this little B&B here. Oh, this is a beautiful courtyard. And she invited us in for some coffee, some water, some tea. And we just started chit-chatting and she's like, come in, come in. So I have no idea what's going on right now. This is awesome though. This is one of those travel moments where you just go with it and you find out this place is beautiful. Help, mm -hmm. help to Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just rolling with it. I just decided to check out some flowers and next thing you know I'm having tea in someone's garden and that is fine with me. She actually runs a small little b and I don't remember the name of it and she said she didn't have a website but I assume it's one of those places where you could just kind of show up and she has two rooms, very modest, runs it with her husband uh, Eon or John basically and she is so sweet and so precious and we're gonna have some tea and hang out I guess. Who knew? <laughs> Please, thank you. More tea. So we both got the English breakfast tea, and then she also brought this little homemade dessert out. Uh -huh. It's some kind of a tart with chocolate. Maria, mm -hmm. It looks delicious. Mm -hmm. Maria? Maria. Mm -hmm. Maria. Maria. Yes. So gracious host, we've got delicious tea and cake. We are happy campers. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> How many days, Sigishora? Mm, three nights. Tonight? Mm -hmm. This is the last night tonight. Mm -hmm. Last night coming? Tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We leave in the morning. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's been good. It's a beautiful town. Yes. Beautiful place to live. Yes. Pension or hotel? Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Fana. Kula. Family. Name. Kula. My husband, John. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was awesome. I've never had a travel moment like that where you're just like randomly exploring and someone's like, come in, come in. I mean, I don't know how many granny kisses you got. You had to have been a kissed lot. on the forehead and cheeks like 10 <laughs> times just now. I mentioned that tomorrow's my birthday and she was like, hold the phone, <gasps> this is big news. She immediately stood up yeah. and gave a hug and started kissing like five times on yeah. Ashley's head and I was like, well, that's the birthday cake that we just yeah. ate. It was delicious, by the way. So I've got lots of birthday wishes already from sweet Maria. You guys, let me get the card that she gave. Let me, let me tell you. We'll put you. the info below as well. If you want to stay yes. there, you can stop and actually have a meal, some cafe, Coffee. some tea, desserts, and you can stay there. It'll be me. I promise she is happy to have you. She was so sweet, incredibly yeah. hospitable. As far as I know, she doesn't have a website, but she has an email and stuff. It's familiacula 
It's John and Maria. Absolutely check it out. If nothing else, stop by for some cake and tea. She makes it. It's delicious. It was kind of a pay whatever you want situation. Yeah, we were like, well, what, how much do we owe you? And she was like, whatever. whatever you think, whatever you want. So we just did that, which, you know, that's fine. <laughs> it was it was adorable. You hear people talk about, oh, yeah, we just got invited in. And I was like, how does that even happen? Apparently for us, it happens by walking down the side street and to look at flowers. flowers. <laughs> I just saw some purple flowers, and I was like, I've never seen flowers like that. I'm going to go look at them. And she heard us and came out and was like, do you want to come in? And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> say yes kind of a thing. And it was so sweet, so precious. By the end, I truly felt like I was visiting my own grandmother or something. Yeah. It was, anyway, that we will leave awesome. all the information below. If you want a very authentic place to stay, check it out. Absolutely. She's so sweet. because I wanted to see a little pretty pink house, which is right over there, but behind me is the Cobbler's Tower. Jordan and I both agree this is our favorite of like the regular towers. Obviously, Council Tower, the clock tower, is the shiniest, the brightest, the most beautifulest. But this one is adorable. It has lots of like kind of medieval charm to it. It looks like you can go inside. I don't know if they have like a full museum or if you can just go to the top, but I I've never seen roof tiles in that shape before. So cute, I love it. Don't tell anybody, but we haven't had just the best luck with restaurants here in Sigishora. But the one place we have really liked, we're here again, it's called Ferdinand Bistro, and they actually have very delicious pizza. So we've gotten basically a margarita pizza with uh, buffalo, buffalo mozzarella, anyway, the fancy cheese. It's very delicious. I didn't get one today because I'm not trying to take a nap, but their spritzes are also very delicious. Anyway, let's dig in. <laughs> mm. That's some dope pizza, y'all. Thank you. You too. let your lunch settle then a nice set of stairs you might actually miss this special little stairway if you weren't actually looking for it it's pretty near the main plaza but this is the scholar stairs it's basically a covered set of stairs that lead all the way up the hill to the church that's on the hill which I guess back in the day must have also been the schoolhouse because it's called the scholar's stairs because they covered it for the kids basically in the winter time or whatever sorry I'm already out of breath I ran out of air for that sentence <laughs> They call it the Scholar Stairs because when it was built, it was kids who were going up and down students to school and back and in the winter, snow, rain, whatever, it was better for it to be covered. It was built actually in 1642. So this set of stairs covered just like this has been here for literally centuries and we are heading up to the top to see the church on the hill. I tell you what, if you come to Siggy Shore, bring your walking shoes or your hiking boots, do a little stretches, hydrate, because there is no shortage of heels and stairs. We've made it to the top of the hill. We're standing next to the church that's on top of the hill. And this church took a couple hundred years to be constructed. I believe it started in the 1300s and construction finished in the late 1400s. And I believe it is a Lutheran church, at least in the 1500s it became a Lutheran church after the Reformation. And unfortunately, it looks like it is closed. Yeah, according to the sign, it's six lay to enter. Um, Does but it get hours at all? It's not open right now. Um, 10 to 18, till 6 p.m. Yeah. But it's, well, we're here. It's like, what, 4.30? Maybe it's closed on Mondays. 
They didn't have any Mondays. hours online, but anyway. Sundays and Mondays, y'all. Terrible travel days. Yeah. <laughs> Just an interesting thought that Jordan and I were discussing before we got on here. Uh, we were trying to read about the church, and so much of the history, even on the tourism website, just talks about the Saxons to mm. current. But this right. was all part of the Roman Empire, and there was a lot going on here yeah. before. This was a Roman basilica before something was rebuilt mm-hmm. as it is now. So there's a lot more to it than just the Saxons coming out here. I just think that's interesting that yeah, that's it's the not whole talked region. about as much. Like Transylvania in general seems to really focus on the Saxons and afterwards. Which is definitely very interesting, and there's a lot yeah. of documented history. Maybe that's it. There's not as much like documentation. Oh, Maybe so. But anyway, it's closed, so we'll head back down. I think we're getting it snack time now. Yeah. I was trying to get some shots of the church and Ashley's like, come over here, come to the gate. And there is like the most picture perfect cinematic cemetery here. Or graveyard. This is like a graveyard. Isn't it? Yeah, I think if it's connected mm. to a church, it's considered a graveyard. I was just reading, this is like a headstone for an entire family. And this family had um, multiple children that didn't live past the age of two. Mm. But that was uh, the 1800s. Late 1800s, yeah. Sorry to bring you down. But I always like to see the oldest uh, headstones I can find because it's just really wild to think that there's like their body right there. But anyway, it's very beautiful. The views of the mountains up here, mm, gorgeous. Beautiful. living any later than like the 1800s but we haven't looked at everything it is one of the most beautiful cemeteries or graveyards we've been to in a long time it's i can't imagine like a more beautiful and peaceful place to lay at rest for all of eternity and it seems to be very common that people almost have gardens on top of each um grave like full flower beds and they're really some of them are kind of wild looking some of them are really well taken care of and it's very beautiful, very green, very peaceful. A lot of the headstones are really kind of elaborate. And then along the path, they have a ton of really old, old, old headstones that I'm assuming like maybe the graves are lost or broken or moved, but they kept the markers. You could spend lots of time looking here. And again, the views of the mountains are just gorgeous. I know it may seem maybe a little morbid or weird to some to kind of spend time in a cemetery looking around, but it's a fun little connection to the people and the history. And honestly, it's like a really peaceful park, kind of. Anyway, I like it. Fun fact about Sigishora, Vlad Tepish, also known as Vlad Dracul, Vlad the inspiration, the Vlad the Impaler, mm. the inspiration from the one and only Count Dracula. Wow. If you watched, what was that, our uh, our second video? Our first, first video. First one. Our our first place we First Romania mm-hmm. video. We went to Brand Castle and learned all about Vlad the Impaler and Dracula. So if you haven't seen that, go check that out to learn a little bit more about him and Dracula and see the castle and all that good stuff. But yeah, he was born here in Sigishora. Yep, you can apparently go visit the house that he was born in, but they also have a lovely little statue of him. I just find the whole, int- it's interesting, cause like he wasn't yeah. known to be a nice man. No. Known no, no, to be no. quite harsh indeed. Mm-hmm. And like very bloody with his punishments and everything. So I think it's very interesting that he's kind of <laughs> honored everywhere. I think he's quite legendary to like Romanian people. If yeah. a Romanian finds this, I'd love to know y'all's take on it, but. There he is, this is hometown. Francisco, get a bucket of acid or algo. I think this is your choice. Mm-hmm. Isn't it? 
Isn't she pretty? This is a langosh, the perfect snack for when you find yourself in Sigishoya. As you may have gathered throughout this whole Romanian series, there is a heavy Hungarian influence in Romania, specifically Transylvania. In fact, in the town of Kobor, where we were on our farm stay, most of them speak Hungarian and not Romanian. Anyway, it's been years since we've had a langosh. We had one for the very first time, and really the only other time, at the uh, Christmas market in Budapest on our very first year of travel many years ago and still I was telling Jordan so to this day every time I hear the word langosh I can hear the lady it was so loud and chaotic and I was like one of these and she was like langosh bread and I was like yeah 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 that langosh bread <laughs> I can still hear her like <laughs> shouting through all the people bread and I'm like yeah I get it I'll take one please anyway this one has garlic sour cream cheese and it's fresh 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 and hot that's so good it's only 15 lei and then we got some water and I ordered the whole thing in Romanian. Are y'all proud? I was proud. Let's go. Mm. That is so good. It's so good. Very fresh. Literally, he had just opened the cheese and like ground it up fresh, fresh out the fryer. Mm 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 mm. <laughs> Very delicious. You can put some garlic on top. And they put garlic on top, which was a fun surprise. This is delicious. And in fact, this one, we had a fresh one at the market, but it's been years. So maybe my memory is fuzzy, but this one tastes way better than I recall. It's very, very it's fluffy. Well, okay. Jordan says those are fighting words, but I'm just going to be honest. Look how like bready and fluffy that looks. The one I remember having wasn't quite as fluffy. It was a little more crispy, mm. but you know. Could just be different strokes, you know, different cooks, different chefs. Yeah, that's a good. Mm. It's delicious, y'all. Did we have baked bread with cheese for lunch? And now we're having fried bread with cheese and sour cream for a snack? Yeah, we are. It's vacation. It's a working vacation, let's be real. We are working very hard today. So we're gonna treat ourselves. A langosh is basically fried bread, a savory bread, and you put whatever you want on top of it. They have some with chocolate, they have some you get picante, they have some that I think you can get with jam, kind of like the papanash, and some of the like sweet cheese. And then obviously we go for the savory with the sour cream, the garlic, and the cheese. Highly recommend, it's delicious. Citadel, we are in Teo Cellar, which is a gorgeous kind of wine tasting room, or really Plinka tasting room here in the heart of Old Town. We saw this in a blog post online and I was like, babe, that sounds really cool. It's like this 500 year old wine cellar that is still in use and they offer tastings of their house made wines, brandies, Plinka basically. So far we've already had a plum or a prune one and this one is pear. We're gonna have five different tastings Oh, this is awesome. Highly recommend. We'll leave some information in the description, but isn't this amazing? So exciting. <laughs> Wine bread, cognac. Mm -hmm. Winners. Mm -hmm. This is so cool. All of this, all the Planka is so good. They've won so many medals. They have multiple gold medals and certificates on all of their Planka's, the plum, and some of the cognac and others and they've won in like western europe above france and other countries as well and they've won competitions in they say japan and germany and the u.s like it's so cool to be here just trying all of the homemade palinka it's all very good and strong <laughs> We've been given snacks, which is helpful because y'all, this Palenka, the ones we've had before were 40% alcohol. This is 50. It will light you up in a hurry and we are moving through it quick style. This is apple. Let's give it a sniff. Oh, it smells good. You can you don't really smell it more. I feel like the first one I couldn't as much, but maybe I'm getting better at it. Mm. 
Ooh, yeah, that one's nice. This one won some awards, I think, back in 04 as well, some two silver medals, so I can see why. This would be really nice, like at Christmas time with, you know, some apple juice or mix-ins. Make it a little less strong. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> That one smells nice and like berry forward. Okay, last one, five of five. This is a forest fruit flavored basically. So, and his wife makes it or developed the recipe, I should say. So we're talking mulberries, blackberries, all the berries that you might find in the forest. And it smells like a delicious kind of a punch, spiked punch, you know, like a fruit punch. About 50%. Well, it doesn't taste nearly as strong. It's like super sweet, mm. super berry forward, very easy to drink, really delicious. Mm. A good one to end on because honestly, after five, it's like fire water after that. It's a lot. Cheers. <laughs> hey. hey. <laughs> you drink? Too much palinka. You, you're not drinking too much. <laughs> no, this experience was a hoot and a half and it flew by. We, private tour. Private tour, yeah. Teo is the owner. This is his name, his winery, his cellar. And he was leading us through the entire thing. Incredibly proud of his product. Showed us all the awards. So kind, very generous and hospitable. It was closed when we got here. We walked in and the door was shut. So we just called him and he opened it up and started doing his thing and we got snacks. and He lived here on site. Yeah, oh sorry. Jordan wanted me to let you know that they live here on site. This building is super duper old. They have a cellar on the other side of the building that's 700 years old. This one that they use for tastings is 500 years old, and he's from Sigishora. His wife is from out in the country, which is where they grow the grapes that they use to make some of this. And it is just a really cool little uh, unique experience in a small town that we highly recommend. This is one of the rooms of the guest house. And first of all, the room is gorgeous and the bed looks very comfy. This is a restored like centuries, centuries old fresco on the wall. It is gorgeous. He was saying 400, maybe 500 years old that they restored. So pretty. What make? King, no? Or queen. Queen. You just need your uh, forest berries. Yeah, I do. I need my forest berry drink. Well, I've got some for later. But we're all set. <laughs> This is from my, my, my mom. Really? Very old. Mm -hmm. This is old. Yeah. Original? Yes. Gorgeous. These are beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. That was incredible, y'all. I'm telling you, the hospitality here in Romania is amazing. It never ends. I, it's one of those situations where maybe it takes just a second for someone yeah. to open up. And then once they do, man. We got a full tour of full like tour. all of the bedrooms, the hand painted furniture. The beautiful. rooms are beautiful. Yeah. We would stay there next time. For sure. No doubt. And you for get sure. like a bottle of like free palinka if you stay here. So yeah. I actually got one of those free bottles in addition mm -hmm. to the whole set that we bought on the way out, which is good because this one was my favorite. So yeah. a little, the little forest berries. birthday treat, you know, maybe I'll have that tonight, watch some Netflix <laughs> and hang out. Highly recommend the experience. It, that was a hoot. It was a That was blast. awesome. He was so nice. Like. So sweet. But that'll round out our time in Sigi Shore. We have one yep. more stop and then we'll be done with Romania, but sadly, one more, one more thing to do. So we'll see you on the morning. Good night. <laughs>